The UN is warning Sudan is on the brink of a full-scale civil war that could destabilize the entire region, as fighting between rival generals shows no sign of easing. In the latest flare-up, an airstrike on a residential area in the city of Omdurman killed at least 22 civilians. It's one of the worst attacks in the three-month conflict. The fighting between Sudan's military ruler and a powerful paramilitary group has already displaced about three million people. Egypt is to host a summit of Sudan's neighbors next week. I asked journalist Naba Mohideen in Sudan who might have carried out this attack. Uh, actually, Monica, it's really hard to know who carried out the attacks because the two sides and the two right factions are accusing each other of this attack. But a lot of eyewitnesses are also accusing the RSF of uh, carrying atta uh, the attacks and accusing the military instead. So uh, the Sudanese military just denied uh, the airstrike uh, attack and they said the RSF uh, are accusing them after attacking civilians um, uh, by saying that whenever the military air force or aircrafts uh, are flying in the sky of the capital, they are carrying out ground attacks and killing civilians and accusing the military. Uh, so they embarrass them and they have a lot of press cards in order to negotiate with the military. So right now it's really difficult to know who are carried out the attacks, but a lot of eyewitnesses, Monica, said that RSF um, carried out that attacks and actually uh, it's not very weird because no. RSF used to uh, attack civilians in a lot of places not only in the capital but also in western Darfur and Kurdistan so it's mm. difficult to know but we can likely figure out who can carry out such right. uh, such attacks. Right but of course uh, the United Nations uh, warning that Sudan could now be on the brink of a full-scale civil war. Do you agree with that assessment? Of course, I agree with that, and we are feeling uh, the uh, uh, the seeds, or we can see the flame, uh, see the flames of the civil war, because right now there is a lot of uh, speeches, uh, a lot of uh, calls for that civil war, and it, it has already started in that four region in western that four Al Jinena, and in northern Kurdufan. The clashes there, Monica, have morphed into tribal clashes, and there is a lot of calls to morph it into a wider and extended uh, civil war. So we are expecting, now I am in a safe place in Al Jazeera state, but we are expecting an extended um, civil war and uh, ethnic uh, vi uh, violations or violence, sorry. Uh, so yeah, Yes, it's definitely uh, a right warning and we are expecting it any time and there, there will not be any safe uh, place in the country. Well, that's a, a very dire uh, picture you're painting there, of course. Is there anything, anyone, be it the international community or the two warring factions, anyone who could prevent uh, a full-scale civil war or is that just a given now? Uh, actually, Monica, it's not too late for the two warring factions to make a compromise to stop this chaotic war, but it depends on their political uh, willingness, whether they will uh, figure out that this war will uh, will burn everything and that will if this war extended, we will never even find Sudan that they are worrying uh, about. So, yes, definitely, if the two white factions and the two generals figured out and uh, uh, knew that uh, uh, this chaotic war will not lead to anything, we will definitely see them on negotiation table. But regarding the civil war, uh, there is no guarantees that it can be prevented or avoided. But, uh, of course, Sudanese people who rejected... Um, a dictatorship and uh, ousted al-Bashir after 30 years of rule and they went uh, in a very peaceful um, revolution and they already sacrificed it, uh, sacrificed a lot of uh, things by their souls, by their properties and now a war in the capital. Definitely we are expecting that the Sudanese will reject any calls to slide into a civil war but that depends on the conflict, if it's prolonged, if regional or international players, um, of course, uh, played a role in prolonging the conflict, definitely uh, the civil war cannot be avoided, Monica. All right. Journalist Naba Muhideen uh, reporting for us uh, in Sudan. Uh, Naba, thank you so much. Take care of yourself.
And the attacks in Sudan have been sparking a mass exodus of refugees who'd originally fled fighting in their own country of South Sudan. It's marking 12 years of independence today since breaking away from Sudan in 2011. It followed years of civil war. The country has one of Africa's most diverse populations and ethnic fighting is ongoing despite a 2018 peace deal that ushered in a unity government. President Salva Kiir recently pledged that the nation's first elections, which have been repeatedly delayed, will take place by the end of next year. DW has been speaking to some of those forced to make the dangerous trip home. They traveled for days, dodging bullets and death. And not for the first time. They're from South Sudan, but left a decade ago when their country was tearing itself apart. Back then, they fled to what is now Sudan. But now, there's a civil war there. So they've come back home, back to where they started. I did not think I would come back home because South Sudan is still in crisis. I can't find the words to describe the journey home. Many people were shot dead, others died because of starvation. Many were trapped in shelters without food. It was hard. Each returnee has a story to tell. When the war broke out, we gathered in Khartoum and decided that we had to leave and get our families out. We bought a car took our things and went to the border with South Sudan. There we ran into Shiluk tribe who started fighting us. Some lost their lives, some children died. We then came here by boat down the White Nile. It took us six days. Each day, hundreds of new arrivals are registered in the north of the country. They come by plane or car, or by boat, crossing the flood waters that have recently devastated South Sudan. So far, more than 26,000 South Sudanese returnees have made it to Ruriak, an IDP camp not far from Bentiu. But their struggle doesn't end here. They're running after war. They, they need a lot of uh, things. Mm -hmm. they, they, some of them, they are sick. Mm -hmm. uh, even now, they are in hospital. They need assistance with uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. They need enough food. They need shelters. All of which are in short supply, here and elsewhere. South Sudan is facing the worst humanitarian crisis since independence 12 years ago. Millions of people are internally displaced, hunger is widespread, and the situation is made worse by political insecurity, conflict and the effects of climate change. These South Sudanese returnees now have to figure out their next move. In their search for safety, they had left South Sudan and tried to build a better life in Sudan. Some hope to return to friends and family, but many others face an uncertain future.